Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. What's, go go What's going on, everybody? It's been a while, but I'm back and I've bought a guest with me because this is going to be a twofer co hosted podcast between the new gaming order and the free play mode. I have brought one of the founders of the new gaming order with me. Mr. Alex Lexus, what's going on, Alex? It's the Juggernaut, baby. Today's a fusion show, a, a dual produced new gaming order and free play mode. So uh, you'll, it, it's going to seem kind of confusing, but it's not. Um, you'll, for my new gaming order audience, you can also check out the free play mode version of this on the free play mode channel. And in the new gaming order, you'll see our overlays and what have you with the background information. So without further ado we're gonna, well, uh, wait let... wait 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 before we get into this i have a special birthday shout out to give because you know what today is alex oh. it is september 9th and that is the birthday of the sega dreamcast happy birthday sega dreamcast <laughs> and ironically enough today is the same birthday as mr shin to the war who we thought was a cool dude yeah so shout out to shin war uh brother to the show and um me and demizzle's high school um brethren so uh shout out to the dreamcast and freaking shin war <laughs> Funny. so now we're going to get into the specifics of why we are here we are here to talk about the playstation 4 slim and the playstation 4 pro now that all the details have been made available and digested for consumption we are ready to give you our thoughts on the matter first starting with the playstation 4 it is going to be 299 dollars us and it is coming out next week september 14th and that is the 500 gig model but now to add to that that will replace the standard PlayStation 4s that we have right now. They will no longer produce them. The Slim is now the new base model. Yeah, pretty much. And uh, what we do know is that it will not play Ultra 4K HD Blu-rays, but it will stream 4K content like uh, YouTube and Netflix and Hulu. And this is kind of a big mistake, in my opinion, because you've got the Xbox One S, which came out about a month ago, and that's able to do 4K video via Blu-ray Ultra HD along with the YouTube and Hulu and Netflix streaming. Plus, both devices have HDR capabilities. So it's like, okay, why are you not going to include ultra hd blu-ray capabilities with your slim machine that doesn't make sense to me it doesn't make sense at all now you would under you would think that with sony being the um patent holders for ultra uh hd blu-rays after winning the uh the, the format war with hd dvd it's almost as if you look at their history with the PlayStation 2, they included the DVD, which was, in essence, the reason why it beat the Dreamcast, because it was a cheap blue um, DVD player. And with that, why are they giving up their advantages to the Xbox One S? You know what I mean? Because you would think, you would think that Sony would put their, yeah, oh, we came up with this, bam, we're putting it into the system. But I'm thinking it had to do with cost. But even still, like the Xbox One S is not that expensive when you look at the different price points that are. It's the same out. price. It's the same price. Both for the basic model for the 500 gig are both $299. But th that one is not out yet, according to when I contacted the Microsoft store. The, the right, terabyte. it's coming out on the 24th. But the two terabyte version is uh, out, and the one terabyte version is out, and mm -hmm. that's uh, three, uh, two, uh, 349 and 399 respectively yes so we still got about two weeks before the 500 gig model for the one s comes out but it will still be the same price yeah as the playstation 4 slim which leads into the playstation 4 pro and what we know about it 
is what we already knew about it because the specs for this thing leaked months ago. I have to say something and shout out to my boy, um, our, our staff member of New Game and Order, K Simi, where a lot of what I was saying came to pass. The specs are already out. Look at how far into development they were. They were at the end of where they were mass producing this, this um, device. Now they're like, oh yeah, well Sony's nothing was confirmed. You know, Digital Foundry and a lot of other sites already had the concrete evidence as to a four teraflop system. There was no way, unless they delayed it till next year, that this thing was even gonna have any more than what was put out there. And here's okay? the thing, here's the kicker to me. Like, I believe that this thing was supposed to be revealed at E3 yeah. this year, but Sony did not expect Microsoft to come out with a fully realized next generation console. I think they expected Microsoft to come out with an Xbox 1.5 as it was being rumored, just like the PlayStation 4 Pro is essentially a PlayStation 4.5. Mm -hmm. They did not expect Microsoft to come so high with the spec with the specs of the Xbox Project Scorpio that when you watch when you go back and watch the E3 presentation for Sony you notice that it's about 40 minutes shorter than everybody else's and that leads me to believe that they were planning on announcing this thing at E3 but Microsoft stole their thunder and they had to kind of sweep it under the rug because how would that have looked for Microsoft to announce the Project Scorpio with these high specs and everything and then Sony like, oh, we're coming out with the PlayStation 4 Pro. Yeah, you know, good it, for us. <laughs> it's like this, for anyone who knows My Way Production and where I get the Juggernaut bitch from, pretty much what happened with Sony is if you watch that episode of when the Power Rangers are fighting the crab, and it pretty much in essence they're like, uh, it, it, only if you've seen this, Microsoft came out and said to Scorpio and Sony is like, dick so big they wasn't ready <laughs> they, they, they weren't ready you know what i mean and like that, kevin hart would say no he no, wasn't ready he wasn't ready <laughs> get him some milk get him some milk and and here's the thing and and i'm for the first time in a position where i can kind of pie face some of the sony fanboys that were saying that the xbox was inferior sony has the more powerful system in your fucking face jerks now your system is the inferior one and it's not even native 4k this Are thing you... th this thing has to um for the playstation slim they have to do firmware to do tricks in order to get it to 4k now i was watching uh the no uh make sure you check them out they're very uh they they had their info down and i was watching it today and it's it showed that it's it, the the way that they, they do the upscaling it's a, it's a little trick Similar to what the Xbox 360 used to do with the risk processing where it would like focus on certain things like er, er, that that's in view and down res what's not in view. It's you know similar I mean? to the process that uh, Halo 5 uses which is called dynamic scaling. Yes. And uh, to be fair before we get into more pie facing and mushing like uh, we got to give props to Sony because I was not expecting the PlayStation 4 Pro to be as cheap as it is. Yeah, this but, is true. This is true. But, but on the other hand, it kind of makes the PlayStation 4 Slim pointless because, as I said, the PlayStation 4 Slim comes out on September 14th. But you know what comes out 45 days later? The PlayStation 4 Pro. And it makes no sense for Sony to release the PlayStation 4 Slim when you have your quote-unquote higher-end console coming out 45 days later for a hundred dollars more now so you know what i was gonna say something you know i wasn't too happy about microsoft going this route or, or you know playing the game with sony right but at least with them doing this the xbox one s is out a full year before the scorpio will debut Exactly. Right? So exactly. You, you're not going to confuse the consumer because now look at like now they're trying to get the, the, the jump on the holiday season, right? So you got the PlayStation Slim, the PlayStation Pro. You still have in inventory the current PlayStation 4. You know what I mean? So when you're looking at, and shout out to um, Brother Nuke, 
you know, and, and making the little Billy reference, you got like little Billy's mom is gonna go to Toys R Us and say, "Aren't these all PlayStations? Which ones do I get?" And a lot of them aren't that tech savvy. So when you look at like they're just gonna get the cheapest thing or whatever is in their budget. Only the hardcore are gonna go after this PlayStation Pro. Now, also the price reflects. You said you said it that oh yeah you're impressed with Sony's pricing for the PlayStation Pro. Without, I really am. I really am. And you I know why? It to be five hundred dollars. But you know why? It doesn't have the UHD drive. That that's the only reason. And I think that Sony is betting on the fact that you're gonna see folks saying, hey, you know what? It's cheaper. Let me get that. You know what I mean? And 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 you got the Xbox fanboys are gonna keep using that and say, hey, you know what? Well, we got this and that. To be honest with you, I could care less, but it's, it's just going to be, just watch the flame war. It's going to get really ugly in the next couple of weeks, you know, and then when the Scorpio comes and take a mega deuce on, on the competition, I wonder what they're going to say now. But we'll get into the Scorpio a little bit down the road, but let's get into the technical aspects of the PlayStation 4 Pro. Like right now, it's got like the original PlayStation 4 has an 8 core 1.6 gigahertz chip the playstation 4 pro essentially overclocks that and brings that up to 2.1 gigahertz which is a 500 megahertz jump in computing power then you have their gpu the gpu in the playstation 4 is a two teraflop uh at 18 computing cores of power uh amd processor the playstation 4 pro outdoes that by 128 percent brings the teraflops up to 4.2 and adds more clock speed at 911 megahertz and the memory essentially stays the same at 8 gig of GDDR5 memory the PlayStation 4 Pros is about 25 percent faster not a significant upgrade but a little bit of an upgrade to the memory and here's the thing here's the most important aspects as we mentioned earlier this thing is not going to be able to do native 4k nope. because it's not that powerful like where this puts it in line in terms of pc cards is the tip is the 970 gtx series of graphics cards by nvidia like yes you can do 4k upscaling in games but even then when you do 4k upscaling it's not going to do 4k upscaling in every game and look good like racing games yes because you have a lot of low res textures going by very quickly mm -hmm. and some sports games and some simpler uh, games that don't have a lot like high polygon counts but the most important thing here is that developers have come out and said that there are essentially two modes that you are able to choose from when developing essentially for pro mode for your PlayStation 4 Pro mm -hmm. uh, you have your resolution mode which essentially allows you to lock in a specific resolution and it will not go above or below that resolution it mm -hmm. has it's a resolution above 1080p like you can lock it in at 1440 you can lock it in at 4k and then you have quality mode and quality mode is essentially what is your dynamic resolution mode which means like depending on what's on the screen and how much is going on the screen at that time is if it will upscale or downscale to different various resolutions and it depends on the developer of the game because mm -hmm. if you play a game like halo 5 uh for the xbox one halo 5 dynamically scales between 900p and 1080p depending on what's on the screen at that time mm -hmm. and due to the skill of the developer 343 studios you can barely notice it you don't notice it at all like even on my 4k tv you know it's still putting only a 1080p image but not once not once even when my girl was over playing it's uh, so I say on the first level of halo 5 you can't tell the difference there's too much going on for you to even stop and pause it to analyze you know what i mean yeah as i said it's it's entirely up to the skill of the developer oh also between the quality mode and the pro mode I think that there's still a frame rate issue. I think that the 4K is is going to be limited to 30 frames per second. Yeah, it's going to be locked at 30 frames per second because right now the standard is roughly because 
when you watch a 4k movie it's 24 frames per second so there is no content above 4k 24 frames per second at the present time that's correct that's correct so with that being said you know um i would say GameSpot and the no they made a good point where if you have a 4k tv or 4k smart tv like i have right there's no reason to get the pro none whatsoever you know and then if you stick with the the uh the slim they remove the optical port so it's like you're losing features so it looks like this the playstation 4 that i have is the one i'm gonna keep because i don't need 4k streaming that my tv can do better than my systems anyway you know so now what needs to happen is you know the consumers have to be educated and look and say hey is this really worth my my money you know I'm still a little shaky about the Xbox One S. You know what I mean? It it's still to like me, if you already own an Xbox One, the Xbox One S is not worth it. No, plain no. and simple. But I mean, it's a better value. Like I can go ahead and trade and upgrade to it, and I'm I'll be just fine. You know, I didn't run out and get the One S because I right now don't need it. You know, eventually down the line we'll see. But I'm more waiting for the Scorpio which uh you know uh, uh, some some facts for you guys originally if the early um specs was it was they're trying to hit 10 teraflops i wouldn't be surprised if something vastly changed between now and next year you know what i mean well for whatever yeah and, and now it's at six teraflops but i'm pretty sure something had changed i remember a year ago um when i was at my job uh i, I was reading i'm like there's no way 10 teraflops is ridiculous you know but somehow they, they i think that microsoft might have a trump card to add insult to injury towards the end but that's just just me you know throwing a wild card out there but you're about to say something different. here's the thing like in my opinion like i would not get the playstation 4 pro because i can honestly count the amount of people that i know with a 4k television on one hand i mean being one of them what? yeah yeah and still have one finger left over so I know exactly four people with a 4K television. <laughs> wow. So, and I'm not one of them. <laughs> now, you do know, you know, here's my thing. Some of the Sony camp or the fanboys are not happy with the Pro. But you know what? If you support Sony, support them. Like, I, I, I get, I don't get how they can be so fickle with like, okay, look, that's what Sony made. And, and that's your team support your team see but here's the thing like if you already own a playstation 4 and you're happy with it there is really no reason to get a pro the only reason why i would recommend getting a pro is if you don't already own a playstation 4 yes and i told matter of fact to shin takuma i i understand he has a playstation 4 i told him to wait i told him to wait At didn't least. he just get it like a month ago all he had to do was wait <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. You know what? It's all love. Tough love, man. You gotta. All right. You know. But now we gotta get to the nitty gritty, Alex. We gotta address the elephant in the room because the Project Scorpio is essentially going to be, by the time the PlayStation 4 Pro is released, it will be a year out. It will mm -hmm. be a, a year away from release. And it puts Sony in a very, very, very interesting position because. You've released this essentially 4.5 PlayStation mm -hmm. in, a, in an attempt to extend your console life of the PlayStation 4 brand. Yeah. Microsoft, on the other hand, has essentially revealed a fully realized next generation console. Well, you know what? I have to stop you there. It's not next gen. No, no. Like, when you look at the specs of this thing, even though Microsoft is claiming that it's not a next gen console let's be real here it is a next gen console it like it is two and a half times more powerful than the xbox 360 not xbox 360 xbox one is yeah it is 6.2 teraflops of gpu power that's insane it will have essentially double the ram of the xbox one because mm. the xbox one has 8 gig of gddr3 more than likely, according to rumors, they are going for 16 gigs of GDDR5. Yikes, and why? That's like, 
you know what? Thing, I, I'm concerned with the price, though. I'm I'm not even gonna bullshit you. If well, we'll get into the price a little bit later, but this is about Sony and where this leaves them, mm -hmm. because in their attempt to get the jump on Microsoft and extend the life of the PlayStation 4, they've put themselves in a very interesting and very dangerous position because when the Scorpio is released in 2017, it's gonna you're gonna have a vastly more powerful piece of hardware out there competing against what is your top of the line system. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? Do you ride with the PlayStation 4 Pro, which will be technologically inferior to the Project Scorpio and try and beef it up with features? And to go like, hey, we may not have the power but we've got this, 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 A, B, C, X, Y, Z, 1, 2, 3, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Mm -hmm. Or does Sony bite the bullet and announce a fully realized next generation console? I think because that would be suicide, bro. I don't think that they would do it. Because Sony knows they have their loyal fans. Like, you know, whatever, you know, Sony can do no wrong in the eyes of some people. So if they do it some people might be put off by that and you do know like the mpd i think the xbox one slim uh actually outsold what was the, the last one for yeah the uh according to the mpd in august the xbox one s helped microsoft win that month in terms of console sales now it might just be that temporary spike but you have to look at what that that s is offering that the playstation systems aren't going to offer you know what I mean? And it's just like, you know, their justification of for not adding the uh, UHD drives is, oh, well, you can stream in 4K. Some people want their disc. Some people want their disc. I don't know. Like you said, they didn't place themselves in a good position because Microsoft is just now it's like a flip of, of roles where all the mistakes that Sony's making, Microsoft is, is out uh, countering it and, and you know, it's it's funny now the shoe is on the other uh, on the other side of the house. Let's see how Sony handles it. I honestly think this is part of Sony being desperate from a company perspective because right now overall Sony as a company is not doing well. Like Sony Computer Entertainment, which is their video games division, is doing great. Yeah, that, that's what's keeping them afloat. Basically. Everything else, music, movies, electronics, not doing very well to the point where last quarter, Sony Computer Entertainment was Sony's top earner. And that should not be when you have a movie, music, and electronics division. That is just something, something that should simply not be. And when you have your video games division essentially subsidizing the losses of three other major divisions, something is very, very wrong. And I think that this move right here was done out of panic and arrogance at the same time. Well, you know what? I think that this they're a victim of rushing, um, getting the system out because they're trying to get the jump on VR. We said this on, on numerous podcasts between both programs. Like, um, I think they, they shoehorned it just to get the PlayStation VR because when the Morpheus is like officially like, you know, on shelves, it's going to be like, hey, we need the, the pro to go along with it. You know, so there you go. Yeah. Like, and I was talking to a friend. He was like, well, uh, and Sony was even saying this is like, well, the original PlayStation 4 is strong enough and capable enough to handle the PS4 VR which launches this October and I was like no it's not because if it was you would not be releasing the PlayStation 4 Pro mm. like seriously so it's like Sony has put themselves in a very very interesting and very very dangerous situation mm -hmm. but this podcast has run for a grand total of 25 minutes so we gotta dip up out of here but before we dip we want to know what you guys think, so leave comments on both sites, on both pages, letting us know what you think of this situation, what you think of the PlayStation 4 Slim, what you think of the PlayStation 4 Pro, how do you think 
it will succeed or if you think it will fail. And also, thumbs up, thumbs down both of these videos if you like or dislike them. And let us know why you like them or let us know why you hate them. <laughs> and with that, again, I, I, I have to be an asshole. I, I have to really stick it to the Sony fans that thought that they can play the power game against Microsoft, the global conglomerate, conglomerate like that's in all, almost all electronic devices that, that we know, right? Sony wanted to play Russian Roulette and say, yeah, we're playing the power game. And Microsoft did power up Juggernaut Punch. Now they're ready to, to you know, take the, the, the crown. And now what's the narrative? What Sony or what are those fanboys going to say now that they don't have the power advantage? Oh, well, we don't need a, uh, uh, to have a more powerful system. No, 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 no. Stick with the argument that you were going with before. And this is pointed to several people that I know still watch the show. Now what? Ooh. Who will rename Nameless yes. because they got kind of salty when we named them last time. So with that being <laughs> said, with that being said, rate, comment, and subscribe. Check us out on NewGamingOrder.com for the latest and greatest on free play mode and this channel. And without further ado, this was a local recording. Uh, I'm, I plan to do a, a lot more with free play mode in this capacity because we can just get the videos out. We don't have to worry about streaming and so on and so forth. So... Thank you for checking us out. Free play mode. We did a WWE tag team match type thing. You know, and one double team it. move. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, on the new gaming order side, we out. We see you guys later. Peace. And for free play mode and new gaming order, thanks for Alex for showing up. Peace. We are out.